good. We <coughs> are grateful this morning to be in this house. We are thankful for those that are with us on this morning. Amen. We, I just wanted to stop and pause and one of our members lost his father on Friday and we just want to pray with him and the Yerby family. Amen. Uh, brother Brother Yerby lost his father on Friday, so um, keep him in your prayers, his, his family, his mother, <coughs> and him, his siblings. Amen. We, we do honor God on this morning for his goodness, his greatness, giving us another opportunity to serve on this morning. We honor First Lady. Amen. The officers and members of this ministry. Amen. And to our social media guests and radio, we thank you also for joining us on this morning and giving us another opportunity to minister with you on this morning. Amen. And yes, our declaration. Amen. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I must be, strive to be obedient to all herein. For then I shall richly enjoy every promise it makes. For then I shall richly enjoy every promise it makes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. To God be again the glory. This morning, if you will join me in scripture, we will read in your hearing James. James, the fourth chapter and the seventh verse. Amen. That is James, the brother of the Lord, chapter 4, verse 7. Amen. It's that book right after Hebrews. Amen. And if you're there, you will find these words. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing more with the doers of his word. This morning, if I could uh, just but reason with you for just a little while, I'd like to do so from the thought. What exactly have you sown your way out of? Amen. I give that to you one more time. What exactly have you sown your way out of? Amen. This morning as we look upon this text, I know it doesn't seem to correlate with the topic, but there is depth beyond the title. Amen. And in this text, we're, we're told that we need to submit our, our ways to the Lord. In other words, we need to become on board with doing things his way and according to his direction. But many times what we have been taught throughout the years in church to sow our way out of things when things are not going right in your finance, then you need to perhaps sow more. If you are dealing with sicknesses and things in your body and infirmities, again, you need to sow your way out of it. If It doesn't matter what it is. We are avid in this day and time in the church of teaching sowing. Amen. And, and when we discuss this, we're talking about the sense of giving money. Amen. We're specifically speaking in financially terms, saying that, or we have sold, should I say, the presence of thought that if the more you sow into God, then the more your problems will become fixed. But then... We turn around and most people who follow that principle, they're sowing, they're sowing, they're sowing. And then they find themselves asking God, well, God, how long is it going to take before my bills are paid? 
how long is it going to take before I'm dealing with this sickness and, and, and this and thus so on and so forth. But I'm reminded of a story of a woman that had an issue of blood. And, and by the principle of sowing, the word said that she had spent money here, she had spent money there, she had spent money with every physician she could come into contact with in an attempt to heal her. And she didn't find such a healing, but she did find herself broke. I'm just telling you what the word said. But along came Jesus. And she humbled herself to a place to where she said, if I could just but touch the hem of his garment, I know I'd be made whole. And in the struggle of her fighting through the crowd, and crawling her way to Christ, she did touch the hem of his garment, and she was made whole, but it didn't cost her a dime. But if you come up a scripture or two, the word tells us that God gives grace to those, or instruction to those who humble themselves. But he resists those who are pride in themselves to say I got it I can take care of this this is all I got to do and, and, and thus we get to this place where the question must be asked what is your sowing taking you out of if you're still broke if you still are sick if you're still lacking if situations are still pressing on you in every direction then what have you sown your way out of in turn, the word just tells us to absolutely, unequivocally submit our ways to God. Come on board with what God is asking you. Understand his word, take his instruction, and this will cause the devil to flee from you. Now watch this. I know sometimes we talk about Christ healing people. And thus, we always take a physical angle to things. And we call people up to the altar. You look sick. Come here, daughter. And we want to put our hands on you and push you into the floor. And then you get up, you're still sick. You get up, you still got things going on. In fact, you're hurting worse because you hit the floor. But we're in this place to where we don't understand that everybody that Christ healed, the deliverance came from the devil fleeing from them. And thus we find an issue that our issues in our lives are not being solved because we are not dealing with the spiritual character. It takes resistance of the devil. It takes getting rid of devilish ways. It, gets, it comes to getting rid of what the devil is whispering in your ear telling you to do and you doing it that is causing these consequences in you and money is not going to change it. You can sow your way to being broke, but you cannot sow your way into God's pocketbook. You cannot sow your way into a healing. You cannot sow your way into the goodness or the blessings of God. We have to get out of this understanding that we can just do what we want to do and give God a couple of dollars and things are going to work out right. They're not. You're not sowing your way into your blessed place. You're not sowing your way out of your sickness. You're not sowing your way into a financial blessing because God is not a lottery system. It doesn't matter how many offerings you give if you don't present yourself to God. If you don't give him you and get in return what does not cost you a dime, which is his wisdom. But we seem happy with sowing, Deacon. We, 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 we want to count that money. We, we want to build infrastructure. We want to build churches. We want to see the church doing physical things. But the church is not building up the temple that God made. We're not looking in a way to represent God when we leave the structure that we have made so nice. The structure looks good and we're so much in the religious formality on Sunday morning. 
But then we go right back out, living before God any kind of way. When does the buck stop? When do we come to a place to where we say that for God we truly live and for God we truly die? When do we come to a place to where people can look at us and establish the church, not establish the fact that you go to church, but to establish the fact that this is the temple of God? This is one who knows God. But this sowing aspect, we have gone crazy with it. We have all but led people to believe that they're going to get to heaven on their sowing. The only thing that you're going to change in your life by sowing is the expenditure of money. God cares not about your money. Now, what I didn't say is that you shouldn't give. That's not what I did. That's not what I just sat here and said. But what I am saying is giving has its place, but living right has a place above it. You understanding what God said has a place above it. If you understand what God says, what you do give is not going to cause you to be broke. I'm trying to watch this. What do you mean, preacher? Do you know that there's a lot of people who don't give in church because they feel it's going to break them? And possibly you're absolutely right. But what is happening is you're not getting the wisdom of God to where you can do better, to where you do have something to offer God outside of yourself. But you must offer yourself to him first. So that you can get to your blessed place. You must offer, you, offer him yourself first. To where you can learn how to deal with the deficiencies in your life. And once you come to the conclusion. That all it takes is to resist the devil deacon. The, oh, I, I, watch this. I got to prove some things to y'all. Because it's right here in the word. I know you don't read your Bible Monday through Friday. But let me tell you what's in there. The word says that when God delivered the boy from epilepsy, he rebuked the devil from him and he was healed in that same self hour. It did not say that the father put five pennies in God's hand at all. When the woman, the daughter of Abraham, was healed because she was bowed over and couldn't stand up straight, he rebuked the devil from her and she was healed. It did not say that Christ gave Judas, who was the treasurer, some money so it could be done. We got to get out of this place of thinking that because we sow into the man or woman of God, that God has a responsibility to deal with our deficiency. He has no such responsibility. The word tells you to submit your ways unto the Lord. Submit yourself unto the Lord and resist the devil. Let the devil get out of you. Let these devilish ways get out of you. You probably don't have nothing to give because you're, the devil is making you slothful. The devil is making you lazy. The devil is making you spend money on things that you don't need and that you don't supposed to spend upon. But once you get rid of the devil, then you have some other things before you. Once you understand the ways of God and the ways of God bless you, then you can get to one of the minute principles of giving. Not necessarily sowing, because watch this. A sower, I said this to y'all a couple weeks ago, a sower is not a giver anyway. A sower is a worker. They sow, which is them working, and they reap a reward for their works. But if you want to get into the aspect of giving, one, you can't give what you do not have. And you can't have anything without understanding the ways of God. And then you say, well, preacher, there's many people I know that don't love the Lord, that don't care about God, and this, that, and the third, and and they're living just fine. They got everything they need. Well, to you, I introduce ASFAB. 
from songs who says he looked at the way of the wicked in the same way but he understood the difference in his end and the, and the difference of their end and he didn't want to contend with that so what I'm saying to you is this money matters or money matters but spirituality is spirituality some of our churches are just ran by religious propaganda the word says you should give to God. And then you don't get anything in return. And then you get mad at God. I, God, I gave all my money away and you ain't came to see about me. God said, I didn't, call, I didn't charge you anything. Amen. But we got to get to this place to where we understand the only thing, the only offering that God is looking for is us. The only thing he wants you to do is submit yourself. Show up. Don't just read the Bible. Amen. Don't just seek to say, I read five scriptures. If you don't apply it, if you don't understand it, you can't do it. If you don't do it, you can't get a return on your blessing because you must sow or do the work to receive the reward. But you giving money means nothing to God. Amen. But this is where, when we start to talk about the real things of God, that we want to close our ears. We have every situation that we bring before God. And then when God shows us how to solve it, we're not interested. If it ain't about God taking the money that we give and multiplying it, we don't want to hear anything else. So you know what has happened? The word has become alive. The word says that we will heap, we will heap teachers to us that will facilitate our itchy ears. We want to hear how we're going to get more money. That's what we want to hear. We want to hear how our lives are going to get better. That's what we want to hear. We want to hear when we're not going to have to deal with a sickness anymore. That's what we want to hear. We don't want to hear anything about how we need to change from the inside out. We don't want to hear when you tell us we shouldn't be gossiping. You don't want to hear us when we say you shouldn't be doing this or you shouldn't be doing that. You trying to rule my life. No, go rule your own life, but don't come to me asking me how to take care of your issues if you don't want to resist the devil. So I ask you, you've been sowing. You've been sowing for years. You've sown into a line of men and women of God. And what have you gotten for it? Other than mad at God because what you sowed and believed God for, it didn't happen by the premise of money. A lot of us are walking around like this woman with the issue of blood. We have sown into this preacher, sown into that preacher, and this preacher and that preacher, and nothing. And still we're wondering, what, 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 where's my blessing? The preacher said, that's the problem. The preacher said it. God didn't say it. The preacher said it. We have to come to you from this word. The only word that God has to abide by is his own. I can stand up here and tell you Peter is a rabbit. And if you believe it, then don't say God said it. Say, I said it. But this is what's happening. Don't look up here and think that everything coming down there is from God unless you try it by his word. And so many people have got hoodwinked in this whole sowing situation to believe that their blessing is on the way because of what they gave. That's people that's been put out their house because they gave their rent money. There are people who have seen their truck their cars going down the street on the back of a snatch man's truck because they gave their car note. And yet, you're mad at God. No, get mad at yourself. Your sowing has done nothing for you. It comes to spiritual character. I'm getting out your way. It comes to what does God say about your house? Oh, glory to God. I'm reminded of the widow woman that came to Elisha 
And the first question he asked her is, what do you have in your house? Maybe you, maybe it'll make sense to you if I, if I say it to you the Samuel L. Jackson way. What's in your wallet? Amen. Are you dealing with something that can change you? Or are you dealing with something that can change your financial capabilities? You can't spend money on your bills because you got hoodwinked into paying money to somebody. And then when you come to the church, the church wouldn't even help me and I give them all this money. Well, maybe, perhaps, if you submitted yourself to God and learned how to help yourself, you wouldn't be at the church asking for help. No way. But yet, we deal with these situations, we deal with these problems, and we only want to hear, oh, the solution is easy. You need to sow more. Oh, you get out your wallet, get out your pocketbook. Well, I only got $500 left. And, well, if I give this $500, God's going to bless it. He's going to turn it into 30, 60, 90 fold. And then the only thing that happens is what changes about your bank account is you, it's, it ain't even zero deep. It's overdrawn because all those checks you didn't wrote before that start coming back. Amen, somebody. And, and, and what's happening is the people of God are suffering. We're impoverished. We're sitting here trying to turn a dollar off of God. And all he simply said is submit yourself. Unify yourself with my instruction. Don't just read it. Understand it. He, to, he, he, he told you everything you need to know. Don't just read it and say, well, that makes sense to me. All I got to do is do this. It, it, you ask yourself, where'd you read that at? Well, I didn't necessarily read it, but the pastor said, I can tell you what Bishop said. I can tell you what Apostle said. He said, all I got to do is this. She said, all I got to do is that. And then you do it, and you feel super stupid. And then you have the audacity to get mad at God. And I just, oh, I know he doesn't work this way anymore, and I'm not going to convince you that he, that he does, but I wish that God could appear to two or three of you in a puff of smoke and just say to you, I ain't say that. That ain't at all what I said. Where did, how did you even decide to listen to that? Didn't I tell you in my word to try what they say by what I said to see if it's true? Did anybody else give me money while I walked the earth? Did you see me having an offering line and saying, okay, everybody over here that want a blessing, stand in this line. Everybody over here that got three bits, stand in this line. You didn't see Jesus do that. Why do we think it's the thing to do in our churches? When do we get to a place, and I'm closing, to where what we give, we don't miss. There's some people in this church that I look at myself and, and say all the time, man, God must be good to them. They can give more than I give. Mm -hmm. But, and they can be consistent with it. But when I look at their life, they make good decisions. They make solid choices. They don't overspend in this area, that area. They may try to feed 15 or 20 pounds onto me. <laughs> Amen. But it's the character that they live by that causes them to stay in a blessed place. Amen. And once we decide that we can change our inner character, which would heal some of these things. Once we understand that the devil is doing us in, and not because he has the ability to, but because we're listening to him and allowing ourselves to do what he's telling us. I, I, I know you need some proof on that too. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice, and another they won't follow. He told you clearly, my voice ain't going to be the only one you hear. So when you heard you know what? 
your rent is due. You right, your rent is due. But them Versace shoes, them, that's what you need. And so you say, hmm, yeah, God, you right. Well, yeah, that's what we say. Yeah, God must be telling me to go get these Versace shoes. And you go get these Versace shoes and your, 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 your rent landlord knock on the door. I'm here for the rent. I, I just had that. Can I get it back to you next week? Next week comes next month. Next month comes two months. Two months become an eviction notice. And now God, God got me in this place. No. Resist the devil. Understand this. I'm going to close when I say this. Understand this. There is no action that you perform in this earth that was not spoken by direction into your spirit. Amen. Everything that manifests in the earth has a whispering spirit behind it. And so if you're allowing the devil to dwell in you, your biggest mistake is you're also allowing the devil to whisper in your ear. So it ain't any different of a message than what he told Eve. Oh, you'll be wise. Yeah, because some of y'all make dumb decisions thinking you got all the sense. Oh, I'm, <laughs> yeah. You, you write it out. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah this, this is going to be great. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and, and the devil is just continually whispering. And as he's whispering, he's doing one of these. <laughs> Amen. Because he knows what's going to happen after you do it. It's no different message. Just like he told Eve, she was going to be wise. She wind up stupid. Just like he tried to tell Job. Just, Job realized, hey, you sound stupid. That don't even sound like God. Amen. The devil, through the years, has whispered this same message. He, he tried to hoodwink Jesus. Oh, just, just bow down before me and all this can be yours. Jesus is like, oh, this can be mine's. Well, wait a minute. Didn't I give it to you? What do you mean it can be mine's? How are you going to give me something back that I gave, I made and gave to you? Amen. So this is what I'm saying to you. You giving God money, it ain't moving him. You giving him yourself allows him to help you change internally the thing that is happening externally that's the only way you get past some of your sicknesses well I don't understand that preacher I, 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 I've got this sickness and it just came up on me no I guarantee you if you look back through the years you have had a place of neglect to yourself that has allowed you to now be reaping this benefit well, preacher, I, I ain't broke because I'm, I, I, I don't do right with my money. I'm broke because I don't make enough. Uh, well, I guess if you go back to 2 plus 2 equals 4, you'll see that 2 plus 2 equals 4. It don't equal 8. You're trying to live at 8 and bring it in 4. Amen. Allow God to speak to you. But let me help you, dear heart. God can only speak to you through here. He's not going to appear to you in a puff of smoke and say, yes, this is what you should do. And if you're waiting on that because somebody has told you, if you put $500 in my hand, God's going to speak to you. Well, I can assure you God didn't speak to them. And he can speak to you for free. It might, uh, uh, thank you, Holy Ghost. It might cost you some money. You got to go buy the Bible. <laughs> Amen. But once you start to read it, once you start to understand it and apply your life by it, now you're dealing with God. And this is all he asks. So I ask you, are you willing to continue to believe that offering God money is going to continue to be the thing that's going to get you where you, you, you need to go? Are you convinced that, well, maybe I ain't gave God enough money? I'm here to tell you, or to ask you, rather, what exactly, at this point, have you sown your way out of?
But I promise you one thing. If you submit your way to him, you'll find your way out of a lot more things that your money never would have been able to take you out of. I'm done. And on God bless you. I'm Apostle Samson, and I'd like to personally thank you for joining our broadcast this morning. We pray that something said in the broadcast spoke to your spirit. We again thank you, and hopefully next time you can come see us personally. But if not, maybe you can catch us again next week. But until then, may the Lord bless and keep you, and heaven continues to smile upon you. Stay blessed. <laughs>